I've got a new SDR transcoder device from Rig Expert, no less. Rig Expert is now making this thing called a Phobos SDR Wideband General Purpose SDR Receiver. This plugs directly into your computer with uh, not much hassle at all. I did have to download a driver and a specific driver for this to make it work correctly, but we're going to take a look at it right now, and then we're going to do some receiving of airband signals, which is always fun. Shout out to Rig Expert for letting me borrow this. This is a loaned device. They sent this to me and asked me to make a video. So USB 3.0 port right there, although the cable that comes with it, that's actually a USB-B connector, and it plugs into USB 3.0 on the other end of the computer. So not a big deal. It does come with its own cable. Kind of an outdated cable, but since it comes with one, not a big deal. It's got a clock in and clock out. You can add your own clock to it, obviously. So it's got this RF port here and an HF1 and 2 port, which means you can connect two antennas to the same frequency range here. The RF port will cover 25 megahertz up to 6,000 megahertz, 6 gigahertz, basically. Basically 50, uh, well, CB radio, it'll, it'll pick that up. It'll do AM CB radio. It'll pick up the 10 meter band, CB radio, 11 meter band. 6 meter band, all the way up, you know, go through 2 meters, 220, 440, and all that kind of good stuff, all the way up 6 gigahertz right there. And then the HF1 and 2 is the HF bands. You can actually connect their, their auxiliary ports, and you can connect it in a different antenna to each one. And you can monitor anywhere from 0 0.1 to 25 megahertz with a 50 ohm antenna on that connection. So over here on their website, they've got a PDF file that's a quick start guide here. High performance SDR acquisition board with a super speed USB 3.0 interface, continuous 25 megahertz to 6 gigahertz operating frequency range up to 50 megahertz bandwidth in a true 14 bit waveform sampling resolution. And right here, it shows you all the ports right here that I just showed you on the overhead power control, HF1 and 2 RF, other indications there. Hardware setup instructions, which was fairly uh, simple. Driver installation. Windows 10 did not detect a driver, so I had to go out here and click on a few things and download the driver. Not a big deal. It took like three minutes to do that. Very easy to do that. Has some cool stuff with it, the, this SDR Sharp. There's multiple versions of software that will work with this receiver. You can get um, you know, HD SDR is one of them right there. Uh, let's see what else they've got. Down, if you go to Rig Expert Downloads page, it'll list a bunch of things in here. I got the one that I chose was the USDR, which is what kind of what they recommended, even though it'll work with multiple things. I chose the USDR software. We're going to take a look at that here in just a second. Some of the key benefits of this device is that it has eight lines of uh, GPO, which is general purpose output. And software controlled digital outputs, uh, they've been added to control external equipment. The passband frequency response has been improved from the uh, previous version. The antenna inputs have electrically static discharge protection uh, over the last unit that they made. And the low pass filters for HF1 and HF2 inputs are designed with cutoff frequency actually around 24 megahertz, closer to the 12 meter band there. The USB data link stability has also been improved. Uh, as I said before, the overall frequency coverage is about 100 kilohertz or 0.1 megahertz through the 6 gigahertz band, 50 megahertz sampling bandwidth, 50 megahertz samples per second IQ rate, or 2x25m samples per second direct sampling rate, high quality signal conversion, double heterodyne, a 14-bit sample depth analog and digital conversion, ADC, continuous data stream, digitized data with no drop buffers, uninterrupted recording, and real-time analysis, and all the features simultaneous, simultaneously with no either or. 50 megahertz rate, 14-bit ADC, and the continuous data stream within the continuous frequency coverage. The compact aluminum and EMI shielded case further enhances the stability of the uh, Phobos SDR itself. They provide software support for the Phobos SDR, including an, uh, a lightweight open source API library. Compatibility wrappers, I had to write all these down because there's a lot of them. Compatibility wrappers for SDR Sharp, Soapy SDR, GNU Radio, SDR++, HD SDR, Exit IO, application software examples for C, C++, C Sharp. I guess Frank will be happy with that and lots of other stuff. And like, like I said, USDR is the software that I downloaded and installed 
And uh, there's a lot that I could probably do an entire video about USDR by itself. There's a lot that I don't know about it. I'm just using the very tip of the iceberg with it today. But we're going to look at this, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when we're picking up some uh, airband. i got to plug this in, so give me a second here. I've got it tuned to an airband right now. DFW Airport's right behind me. We're about 139 megahertz right now, and on the mode over here. I forget where that's at. Demodulator, right here. You set AM, FM. It's on AM right now. So it's on AM. Turn it to FM. It's not going to pick up anything. Guy talking a second ago. This frequency was re really busy a minute ago. I was listening to a bunch of different stuff. Airplanes coming and going. This is just a beacon right here. But you see right here they've got airband voice. This little... The band plan, so it tells you where the top and bottom of the band for airband voice is. Turn that down a touch. And um, you can see what's going on, so you can see the activity on the waterfall. And right above that here, you've got the ham band. And I was, I was hearing APRS signals, although it doesn't decode APRS. Change that to FM. It doesn't decode APRS, but I was hearing APRS signals earlier. And you can kind of manipulate the frequency with this part up here, although it you can hear part of that. 144.390 is where APRS signals are. And there might be a way in the side of the software to turn this down, but you can't, uh, like, you click uh, up here and down to change these numbers, but you can't do it any more granular than that. So there's probably a setting in the software you can change that. There's nothing to hear on APRS, really. It's just APRS noise. <laughs> so I just thought it was cool it was picking that up. 148 right there. That's outside the handband, so not really picking up much. And again, I don't really have an actual. I don't have an actual scanner antenna. This is plugged into my uh, dual, uh, my tri-band Edfong J-Pole right now, which is my main antenna on the ham shack that I use to talk on the local two meters and 220 repeaters. So if we were to get an actual like a discone full band, wide banded receive antenna, we would probably be picking up a lot more signals. So yeah, so if you sometimes I get emails from people saying, "Hey, I'm looking for a scanner antenna. What, what do you recommend?" And I, you know, I, Radio Shack used to sell good scanner antennas. I would probably just find one on Amazon. As far as receive signal goes, it's not as important. I mean, you can basically receive on any antenna you want. Yes, a disco antenna or a full length antenna for whatever band you're going to receive on will receive better, but you're not going to damage anything. It'll receive on anything. the 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 thing about radio transmissions is the SWR and impedance have to match for the full power output to happen when you're transmitting, also to avoid damage to your radio. But as far as receiving, that's not all that necessary. So you can kind of use any antenna you want to. As I'm demonstrating here, I'm just using a, a vertical Edfong J-Pole antenna, and that's that's all that we've got going on right now. But we can move up here. It shows uh, the marine band right here is in green. And I don't have any marine band activity near me because I'm not near an ocean. If I were to go down to Galveston, I would probably hear some stuff here. Something there. Oh, that's just a, that's a, that's a digital signal. Okay. You can change the bandwidth by kind of dragging up there at the top. Let's, uh, let's drag that down a bit so you guys can see it better. There we go. Okay, so I was talking a minute ago about changing frequencies. You can do that by clicking here, but it won't let you click, like the last four or five digits here, it won't let you click on them. So there might be a way to change that in the software. I don't know. But anyway, that's what I was talking about earlier. So you can kind of tune around the waterfall here and find different signals from different things. And you can drag and scroll up and down the band. There's some big signals out here. I don't know what this is. Okay, now I'm listening to that whole thing. AM, double sideband, lower sideband. It's probably just, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that signal is. It's huge. It's like a 520 kilohertz wide, if I'm reading that correctly. Move this one up here. Another one here. Huge signal there. Don't know what that is. Probably just noise from something in my neighborhood here. Who knows? Okay, here's the military air band. Turn that bandwidth back down to like 25-ish. It's kind of hard to get it exactly. 24600 is pretty close. 1.25 meter ham band. You can see there's not much activity going on in that one right there. 
6.8 is looks like it'll go up there and that's about as high as it goes right there that's 6.828 gigahertz right there it's kind of fun you can kind of tune around and see what's going on uh if you're getting weak signals in there then you can be like well you know what i'm going to go get me a little bit better antenna for monitoring what now and uh and you can see yeah, yeah there's it's it's really fun to listen to the airband stuff airband voice airband vor or ils whatever that is change that to because airbands on am Gulfstream 455 Bravo Echo was the call sign on that plane. You can turn that off if you want to turn that off. Turn that back on. A lot of stuff this software will do that I don't know because I'm not real familiar with the software itself. But definitely a cool tool to uh, monitor all kinds of things. If you're into SDR or shortwave listening, SDR receiving across, you know, you might be able to, I think there's a way to connect it to some servers on the air, on, on the internet and receive over the internet as well. Uh, Web SDR is a good website to go and, and listen to different stuff like that. So Phobos SDR from Rig Expert. Check the link in the description below. I do have a 5% discount code on most everything Rig Expert, which is added to my page that I'll share in the link in the description below. So go check that out. Let me know what kind of questions and comments you have. And thank you once again to Rig Expert for sending me this uh, sample device to uh, play around with and test and show you guys. 73.